Well, morning everybody. I thought it might be fun to do this video I've been meaning to do for ages about the old uh, road railer. Uh, I've had I've got several of these and I have no idea how they sold them because they simply don't appear to work. So let's have a look at it in a little more detail. Started with the tractor unit. <clears throat> there it is. Lovely little thing. Got the small chassis, gimbal chassis in it. They never made it with a plastic chassis. And they've normally got a nice heavy weight there. And the trouble with this small chassis is that it skips and it lifts and it's got minimal pulling power. Now the only one of these I've ever seen working reliably is the one engineered by John Wallace who, believe it or not, made a chassis for this that was not only twin pickup but was also four wheel drive. If you actually search for John Wallace on the Minic Facebook page you will actually see pictures of it that he posted and it's an amazing little piece of engineering. But there it is. Now um, it works by hooking onto the tractor unit like that underneath this loop and virtually all of these you see have this loop broken off because over time it's gone brittle of course and the plastic has snapped but again with the wonders of 3d printing making a replacement is not that difficult so there we are now this thing as I say can barely drag itself along let alone this whopping great trailer with all the weight and me mechanism inside it If we have a look at that and how it works, it's quite a fascinating little piece of kit. Just move that out of the way. Um, has several parts to it. First and foremost, the hinge piece at the back here, which when it backs up to the adapter that fits onto a standard uh, series uh, for buffer stop it slides onto there and slides up out the way bringing the two buffer stops into contact with the body there where it stops and the sole purpose of that bit is so you can link these trailers together like so and the only person I've seen ever make that work is uh, Dave White who had it running at several exhibitions and had a train of these going. I've never managed to get a train of these going. They're just far too far too closely coupled. And this swapping mechanism at the back is the strangest thing. So how does that work? Well, put it quite simply, you've got this lever here, which switches the wheels up and down like so. Again, hugely unreliable. And then the second part you've got is this hook arrangement here, which is attached to the hook arrangement here. The hook arrangement there, as that goes in underneath, catches onto the pin at the back. Let me move that back into shot a bit. There we go and actually secures it and drags it along. And this lever then is forced under there which brings the road wheels into play. When it's attached to the rail tractor unit of course it goes on and that goes to the top which then face, forces down the railway wheels at the back and allows it to carry along on the track. This just hinge should just hinge down out of the way but it's moved in its plastic mount there we go right so the idea is your tractor unit comes along here it's all nicely hooked up like so and it backs down onto there that looks underneath there and if we turn the whole thing upside down you'll see that as it comes in and it backs up so it hits this spring-loaded lever here 
and as it hits that it pushes it to one side that then pushes this lever over like so and disconnects it from the pin now at this point as I say it's like that it's not touching the moment so I haven't got the body on it the body actually fills that little tiny gap between the buffers and the uh, actual buffer stop itself and then what should happen is when you back the train in it should go clunk and come round behind that like that thereby allowing the hook to come back into play and hooking itself onto the pin on the towing unit and then as it pulls away that is spring loaded and just flicks out of the way the thing is these buffers aren't spring loaded so the only way it's going to work is if you bring it up like that so as it gets pushed to one side like so and then ram it to go around behind there these really need to be a, some sort of spring loaded affair but they're not so this could never have actually worked Now what does happen in practice is exactly that. You run your train in, well, there, nice and hard, like so. Now it just deflects it enough for the, if I can take this out, for the spring-loaded thing to move to one side, then go behind that spring-loaded pin and then release. So it doesn't really work. So, this is obviously a copy of an original. Uh, the original was very kindly lent to me by Dave White. Uh, it does have some detail differences to it, uh, in so much as, as I said earlier, that in on the original is just a normal pin that takes the spring there for the spring loaded piece and basically it has no top or head on it like that so the spring obviously over time has just fallen off and disappeared so even Dave White's original didn't have a spring so but it was enough for me to take measurements and produce a reproduction the quandary here being of course you know the reproduction doesn't work but if we take a look at it uh, to print it really needs to be printed with that upon the print bed of the printer to give you a nice flat tidy surface which means these need to be attached afterwards the buffer stops the spring loaded pin here originally is a push-in clip affair with a spindle actually on the lever very very difficult thing to reproduce in 3d so what I simply did was make a couple of um, buttresses there with a hole in and a panel pin which goes through there and allows that to move. Now making these things are quite quite complex but you do allow yourself to 3D print some jigs to help you. Uh, this particular one is a distance piece for cutting off the nail to the right length. This is a jig for bending the spring to the correct shape and this jig Basically, it sits in there and it means you can quite accurately position your buffer stops there and there. And there we are, one reproduction, as I say, doesn't work. The other version I had a look at doing was that, utilising the existing triang buffers instead of these funny little things here but again it makes no difference it still works just as badly as that one does but there's the original so what would be the answer I said well possibly make it so as it has buffer stops so here I have quite simply robbed the mechanism out of a triang uh, hydraulic buffer stop but again you just don't get enough power out of that tractor unit to deflect these at all and also you then lose the fact that you don't have that in exactly the right position and furthermore as I say these 
you need to deflect them by ramming them and whatever so I even thought about building one into a platform section like that but basically I've almost now run out of ideas about what to do so uh, there we are if you've got one of these and it works perfectly perhaps I'd like to tell me how and if you haven't got one of these and you're thinking about purchasing one these are the problems you're going to be up against so there we are an exploded view of the road railer unit um, I just thought you guys might find it interesting. Thanks very much.